Okay, welcome back to another episode. Thank you so much for joining us. This episode is not what I thought it was going to be, so stay tuned. We have something happen that's a little bit devastating, and actually at the end of the day, it's pretty funny. So let's get into it. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. We put our new Schaefer Marine furler together and I filmed everything. Things can happen. Anyway, yesterday went completely smooth. Spent about six hours putting this furler together. We did a really good job. I wanted to do a really good job for Schaefer Marine. I wanted to do a good job for Steve and we did. We filmed it and it went brilliantly. We worked all the way into the night, it got pretty dark, we had to get lights from the neighbours, but we were down there and we had head torches on, I managed to capture it all. This morning, I put in the SIM card out of my camera into my computer to transfer the files onto my editing software. And as usual, and so I just left it on my bed like I do every other day, and I went and made breakfast. I came back and I'd seen that my computer had been bumped and the, the, uh, the SIM card had been ejected. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll do it again. So I put the SIM card back in, nothing was showing up. I didn't realize, but I looked down and the SIM card, this part was missing the little SIM card that goes in it. I looked on the floor and I found a piece of it. All my footage from yesterday that we worked really hard on got eaten by our cat. I was really mad <laughs> and then I was really upset. My thigh caused a lot of grief, Bubba. Are you worth that grief? Hey? Are you worth all the grief? Are you worth all the trouble? When did he do that? Like, was it when it we were eating breakfast? It would be this morning, probably, when we ate breakfast. Right there might have a SIM card in it. Like, for a time out all morning waiting for him to do a poo and he's done one. Now he's just going to find some gloves and see if we can find the other piece of this that has all our footage on it. Anyway, the point was, this video was isn't going to be what I thought it was going to be. It was going to be great, and now it's just about a cat that ate my work. So I couldn't create a video that I wanted. So I've created this one instead. This video was going to go a whole nother way. Lee did a really good explanation on putting the furler together, but we can't share that with you anymore. And we can't do it again because the furler has been put together and it's riveted together. So it's not something that we can undo and potentially show you how to put it back together. It's permanent. So that's all right. We're going to take you down and show you. Don't you even knock that camera over, Marita. You've done enough. Get a cat, they said. It'd be fun. It's a pain in the ass is what he is. But we love him. <laughs> you know, Stuff like this happens, you just gotta laugh about it. First you cry and then you laugh about it. So I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching. And if you have a cat, don't leave these out. They'll eat them. What a day. So I don't know if we did, if we found the other part of this, if it would work, but Lee wants to try. He is capturing his poops and he's gonna sift through them. We'll let you know, so stay tuned. <laughs> We've gone through two of Moritai's poos. No, like, I'm not doing the next one, that was disgusting. It might be a bit shitty now. <laughs> All right, this afternoon we are putting on our Schaefer Marine. Well, first we're gonna to put it together. We're gonna to putting together our Schaefer Marine furler, and then we are going to put it on our beautiful mast. It's very exciting. We just now have to get the boatyard to move these two boats out of the way. Yeah, we asked for it to happen this weekend, but it didn't, so we'll see. It'll all work out in perfect timing. Anyway, today is all about Schaefer and their furler. Thank you guys so much for providing this incredible furler that will change our life and the way we sail. And today's job, we're putting the furler together. 
we are getting rid of our old Profile furler and upgrading to a Schaefer Marine 3100 furler. So what do these furlers do? They furl your head sail in on the foil and furl it in, furl it out. It's just so simple. You pretty much pull on one line and your sail unravels from the furler and you pull on the other line and it fills it back in and your sails away. So as a cruising standpoint of view, it is brilliant. It makes sailing so much easier. Rigging inside, we have no idea how old it was. So it was time to upgrade it, time to put some new rigging on, which in this case is the Force Day, which runs inside the foil in, and that's our furler. There's the new Schaefer 3100 and beside it is our old Profile furler. So with the Schaefer 3100 system, there's a few things I like about it. It's all metal construction here. So it's nice and strong and the reason it's nice to be not like just plastic hanging up the front like our old one You've got your anchor system here so things can get bumped in that and this thing is solid You can see the the housing itself is just It's like all Schaefer stuff. It's just built tough and as a cruiser standpoint brilliant. You can hear that They're the toil on bearings pretty much lifelong bearings. There's a little flush hole here so there's no lubrication needed at all. All you have to do is every now and then you can give them a fresh water flush here. Pretty simple, straightforward. A few little differences I suppose. The turnbuckle here is exposed in the old profile one. This sits up inside here. So yeah, there's not much to them. They're a pretty simple unit. Can't wait to get out and give this one a go. Okay, for us the head sail is just like the most used sail. If generally always got our head sail out. Ease of use is what you want. You want this thing spinning easy, you don't want any jam ups, you want you know just nice and easy on the control lines, pull it in, pull it out. Toggle to our chain plate and our in this case it'll be our hammer marine turnbuckle will be connected here which will sit up inside our torque tube here which gives full adjustability to the head stay and and pretty much it's from there up just your foil and a few little bits and pieces which we'll go over once we open up all the boxes. We've got a little bit of space here to unroll our wire set up to put this furler together. Sail guys, there's a few tools in here, allen keys, shackles, bearings. So we'll get to all them. I've just brought down a few basic tools. I've got some screwdrivers, hammer, pop rivet gun, snips, bit of tape tape measure and a hacksaw to cut with. I've been online, they've got some great tutorials online how to assemble this. Let's get into it and see what we can do. All right guys, first things first, let's have a look at what Hammer Marine has sent us. We're working on top of plastic here. Obviously we're in a boat yard, gravel, there's been steel shavings, there's everything just to keep it all nice and clean. And we don't want to scratch up our new cable. We've just laid out some plastic. We're going to work off that. I've done that with our mast. We worked off the plastic, all our cables, so you're not dragging and sliding your brand new rigging along the ground. There's a really good informational book here that pretty much gives you a step-by-step -step the whole way from start to finish. There's no guesswork. You take your time and read that, which I've only read it once and I can see it's very straightforward. Pretty much with some basic hand tools, I can't see why anyone couldn't really achieve putting together their own furler. We'll see though, I haven't done it yet, but that's my assumption. All right, so some basic calculations here. I've just got to take a measurement off our existing stay, which will be this here and our stay lock at the end. So once I minus those two off, it's gonna shorten my stay length and that's it. And then it's a matter of just putting this all together. So, all right, we'll get into it. I'll stop flapping my gums, do a couple of basic measurements and see what we've got. I've already got a measurement of the furler when we took it off the boat. So I know my original length, which is the pin to pin. So before I cut and put my stay lock on, I'll double check, I'll do a pin to pin on the stay lock and cut it. I'll leave that till last. I know they do say it in the book here, you can cut it and then slide it all on, but I like to just make sure, measure 50 times and cut once. Stay sail length, it's 18 foot. So I'm gonna start sliding down the, all the bits to the foil. All right guys, that is where the footage ends and if you want to see any more, you'll have to go inside Moritai, our cat that ate the SIM card that shows the rest of the installation. But I'll give you a quick little rundown on what we did achieve last night in the dark and that was just pretty much putting our foils together after 
uh, reassembling the main unit. This is the two pieces of foil that we worked our way along with. They're all in little sections. They're all held together by these rivets and they all have a joiner that sits around the wire that has a bearing inside. So it's very simple guys. Put it together, rivet it off, and there you have it. So that's what we did last night. Uh, like I say, Moritai ape footage, so we can't show you. I'm just telling you what we did do, and it's just laid out all our foils and joined them pretty much like that with rivets. Like I said earlier, if you did want to see a detailed install video of this, Fred's got one, which is the president of Schaefer Marine. He does one on the dock. Also, you generally have like a swage fitting like this. The Schaefer Marine 3100 furler system we're using, there's X amount that you have to cut off. So once you cut that, you're just left with some bare wire. This is a stay lock fitting. This is what we'll be joining onto that wire that we just cut off and joining back onto here, like so. So now it becomes a mechanical fitting as opposed to a swage fitting. I'm going to show you how we put it on. There's the stay lock. This is a used one. So what I've done is bought another cone here. You can see here on the cone you get, it says 716 one by 19. So the wire is a one by 19 and it is 716 in diameter. These are reusable and this is the second time this one has been used and you do have to replace the insert. There's not too much that can go wrong with these. You want to just be careful you don't get the wire inside here. You want to make sure with stay lock, they say three millimeters of the inside core that you slide this back on. Other brands will be like one and a half times the diameter and so on. They all have their different methods of coming around the cone. But in this case, stay lock has three mil out. We want to slide on this piece so we don't forget about that. I'm just going to get rid of any little burrs on here before I start. Some people do stick a vice grip on these and actually just do a twist and it all undoes, but it's their own. I don't believe in scratching all the wire up like that. This is the way Staylock suggests. Stainless steel is a funny thing. You've got to look after it. You don't want to contaminate it. You don't want to scratch it. You want to keep it nice and clean. Okay, so now we've got that. I've got the inside here. Slide our cone on. Do is keep about three millimeters out here. We just wrap this back up the way we found it. So once we wrap it up, a couple of things we want to do is we don't want the wire falling into this hole like so. If it does end up wanting to sit on a wire, we just move it around a bit. We're gonna even these up around the cone here, but what we don't want is it to slip in like so. We wanna maintain our three millimeters here. So if this is the case when you're putting it together and it slips in there, it's just a matter of rotating the cone a little bit. Do the best you can. You can just slide this thread up a little bit and it helps you keep it all in place. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this Loctite on so the threads don't bind up and then I'll put some more on. So I'm just gonna secure this. I'm gonna wind this on. So, oh. so I'll just double check that everything looks good. So what we're looking for here is that everything's folded over nicely. Nothing's fallen into our little slot because that compresses around the inner core. That's looking good. Everything's looking good. Nothing's too close together. And we'll put a bit more thread locker on here and tighten it up completely. We'll snug that up on the ground. <clears throat> That's it. And this morning we've just put on the stay lock fitting, which completes that. And now we're going to put that onto the mast and it's ready to stand. Heavy. Oh. Doing a great job, guys. And get it to the mast. So they're going to attach it to the mast. And that's it, that's the final thing going on this mast and the mast is ready to stand up onto the boat and the boat can turn back into a sailboat again. Very, very exciting. We just now have to wait until these boats right next to us are moved and we'll be able to put it up. Probably just walk around it all the time like you're doing. Beautiful job everyone. Brand new furler, we are not gonna know ourselves sailing. It's going to be amazing. Our mast is ready. She's ready to rumble. Look at that beautiful furler, hey? Eh? Look at that. That's a bloody thing of beauty, that is. Hey? Eh? 
Beautiful coil on bearings. Nice heavy duty construction, just, just in case someone's a little bit rough with the anchor as it comes up and it knocks it. It's a classic, not plastic, guys. This stuff's built tough, like all their gear. What is so. it? Turn around. Oh, what is it? Legendary strength. Strong. Beautifully crafted there. Look at that. Hey, the boys in that machine shop, I tell you what, they do a bloody good job. Yeah, we're super What stoked. a great team. Great team, great company. Go and support them. You need anything for your boat. Honestly, it'll last 40 plus years. It's not their first rodeo. The boat was originally fitted out with all shape of gear and um, half of it's still in use and working. So 40 years later, it's just, I think, time to upgrade a few things like um, that were originally placed on. And if it's lasted 40 years from the beginning, why not use Schaefer again? Get another 40. See me up. Make sure you like and subscribe. And get the gun and, and tighten them up. It's just riveting. Really is. Just riveting. <laughs> <laughs>